More young people around the world are being diagnosed with colon cancer. A new study from UC San Diego finds an extraordinary link between early exposure to a bacterial toxin called colobactin and colon cancer in people under 50. Joining us now to break down the findings is the study's senior author, Dr. Ludmil Alexandrov. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. Let's start early life exposure to colobactin shown to be a driving force behind early onset colon cancer. Dr. Alexandrov, how are kids exposed to this bacterial toxin? Yes, that was a very striking result because we, we, would, we could see that this very early exposure and we think they're happening in the first 10 years of life are actually generating many, many mutations in the colon of children and then putting them on a fast track for cancer as young adults. Uh, but the question you ask is the right question. Why are children being exposed to these infections? And we don't think, uh, we, we think these are uh, due to changes in lifestyle. Uh, these are things such as uh, mode of birth, such as breastfeeding, such as the intake of antibiotics, and of course the food and nutrition we give to young children. All of these can shape the microbiome and all of this could actually impact whether this pathogenic bacteria takes place in the uh, colon tissue of, of children and again causes many, many mutations. This is outstanding. The strains of this coli reside in the colon, but what can we do to keep it from mutating our DNA? That's a great question. Now we know it's there, but in fact, we do need quite a lot of future research to be able to both intervene and prevent this infection, and also for people who are young adults at the moment to be able to screen them uh, and make sure that uh, we are monitoring them on a regular basis for colorectal cancer. So these are active areas of research and we do hope to have more answers in the next two to five years. As we kind of wrap our head around this groundbreaking discovery, it indicates that microbial exposure can lead to cancer. How can that translate into a correlation to other cancer types? Yeah, so it, well, what it tells you is that these microbes uh, they have developed their own weapon systems to protect from other microbes. And they use them, and the, the weapon systems, the, the way they work is they mutate DNA. But if you have sufficient amount, uh, amount of these microbes in your colon tissue or in other tissues of your body, you can actually get many, many mutations that can lead to cancer. Now, our evidence is for colorectal cancer. We are actually quite certain that other cancer types that we're seeing to increase in early life are probably driven by similar mechanisms. Wow, driven by the mechanisms, you've mentioned it a little bit, but talk about the environmental, the diet, the lifestyle factors that put us at risk of this colobactyl production. Well, the scary part here, it's not the things we do as an adult, it's the things that our parents have done when we were children. And again, we don't know the exact causes, but our main hypothesis are how, are the, how the mother has given birth. Because we know that if you have traditional birth, you, you'll be covered with the mother's microbiome protecting the child for a certain amount of time. But if you have a cesarean section, that will not happen. We also know if mothers breastfeed, again, that will significantly impact the microbiome versus if you don't make that choice. But also the amount of antibiotics we give to our children for, for small things that are happening. Uh, and the way we feed them with different types of food, they can have substantial implications on the formation of that of the microbiome. And again, that may lead to this pathogenic and mutagenic bacteria that can increase the risk for developing cancer. And it, it just seems uh, that all of us adults should take heed as well. Uh, smoking, drinking, lifestyle things, uh, microbiome affected, uh, and these results are, are astounding. What your thoughts in general on this? Yeah, I mean, there's many things that we can do also as a, a, a adults to make sure that we do not get cancer. Uh, smoking, as you mentioned, drinking in moderation, obviously obesity, uh, uh, and being able to have a healthy lifestyle, being able to actually exercise regularly. But again, most of the time when we think about cancer, we think of the things we should do for ourselves. We need to be also very carefully thinking of the things we do for our children and make sure that they're healthy and that we're providing them the best possible environment because the decisions we make 
for them at age four may actually be impacting them when they're 30 or 40 years of age. Groundbreaking discovery, Dr. Ludmil Alexandrov. Thank you for joining us. Hope that you'll come back and keep us surprised on your research and what you're finding. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Chinese factories are claiming on social media they can get goods to Americans directly for a better price. Coming up, how to avoid wasting your money on deals that may not be what they seem. It's a claim circulating on social media. Chinese factories saying they can get goods to Americans directly for a better price by eliminating the middleman. Scripps News Group's Elizabeth Van Mietri pulls back the curtain on the so-called deals and reveals how to avoid wasting your money on items that may not be what they seem. Every piece. They all have a story. On every shelf. The majority of the hides they sourced were from India. All kept by Shikology owner Pierce Morgan. He sells and restores secondhand luxury goods. The story of who this came from, I will never forget. And the story of who made it, also really special. Anyone who stops by his shop can browse shoes, bags, and clothing. But millions of Americans have seen a new trend on TikTok. These two factories also supply clothing. Alleged factory workers in China say they work at factories where some favorite brands are made. More than 700 shops selling all kinds of bags. They claim they can get you real designer brands and for cheap. It seems to be a response to the heavy tariffs and the great cloud that Chinese manufacturers are under given all of the uncertainty. Always $10. From Birkenstock shoes to furniture, handbags, and workout gear. Sky Canaveral is that principal analyst for retail and e-commerce at eMarketer says be careful before you buy. There's a lot of disinformation in these videos. And if these deals sound too good to be true, they probably are. Morgan says he too has seen the videos come across his feed. There's this really f impressive level of marketing that goes into selling counterfeits firsthand that if I didn't have such an issue with it, I would be more willing to admit that it's really impressive. But here's the thing. Sometimes the price of a fake good is similar, if not more than the price of buying it secondhand. Buying directly from a factory will not save you on tariffs. After May 2nd, the loophole allowing packages valued under $800 to bypass duties goes away. That means 145% tariffs on most Chinese goods. And Sky Canavis says getting a better price by avoiding the middleman and buying direct isn't all that it's cracked up to be. Absolutely, the middleman or intermediary in retail is a trusted player that ensures that both sides of a transaction um, meet their responsibilities and obligations and provides protections for both sides. So if your order isn't what you actually received, you may be stuck. And in the long run of thinking that you can resell these items, if that's a potential goal, I've heard that a little bit, you're gonna be really, really disappointed. Elizabeth Van Mietri, Scripps News Group. Spring is in the air and so are seasonal allergies. Coming up, what you can do to get relief this year. While spring is a beautiful time of year, it does come with pollen that can lead to watery eyes, sneezing, and other allergy symptoms. Earlier today, our anchor, Melissa Masiha, sat down with Dr. Abby Olulade about how you can help manage seasonal allergies. Well, Dr. Abby, thank you so much for joining us. You. you know, I love this time of year because spring is here. Yes. But along with that comes the allergies. Basically, what triggers all those allergies? Yeah, so it's really all the things in the air that can irritate the airways. Uh, and we've seen that we've had a lot of rain, so those flowers are blooming. I can see the grass in my backyard like growing mm -hmm. at astronomical rates. And so all of that leads to people reacting to these things that are floating around the, in the air. And it gives you all the symptoms that cause you to have dripping, to have watery eyes, sneezing, all of that. So.